My buddy bring me my wife's photos with a group of men. I was shocked what I saw there. I could feel my heart breaking down into pieces. I am 34, male. So I met this girl when we both were 18 and joined college. We quickly became friends and soon our friendship turned into a romantic relationship. She moved in with me and I basically looked after all her expenses since then. For years later, I got a job in an oil company in the Middle East. Seeing how our lives gonna be for the next couple of years, we decided to get married and we did. Big mistake. I worked there for 10 long years and used to come back home once in a year. Meanwhile, she gave birth to three kids. As long as I was there she never gave me any reasons to believe that she was cheating on me. She called me regularly, always replied back to my messages and what not. It all started when I was back home after I was done in there, that is a couple of months ago. One of my good buddies called me one day and asked to meet me. We met at the nearby park, and that's when he broke this one to me. No, he actually showed me a couple of pictures. It was hers, of her being without clothes with different men in different sexual positions. Doing things that she told that she was into. I could feel my heart breaking down into pieces. However I held my calm, and went back home. I didn't tell her anything. I took my car and went for a drive and that's when I really contemplated this. I don't know why but I decided to go for paternity tests. I just felt it. I did and the results came. No, I wasn't the father of any of the three kids. This was enough for me and I confronted her. She went hysterical and never answered any questions. She packed her things, took the kids, eight, five and two, and moved in with her mother. I was back at my normal being, not really, the next day, and I called up this same buddy and asked him to come over. He did and he started sharing the story. So a while ago one guy who was his good friend and gym buddy approached him and asking whether he wants to be in a group fun. To which he said no as he was in a relationship with someone. That evening, after their gym session they went to the nearby steakhouse and there, this guy showed my friend the photo of the girl who was doing group fun. Yes, it was my wife. Turned out that this guy was sleeping with her since she was in college, while we were dating. He knew that she got married to some poor soul, and she kept seeing him along with other men as well, mostly his friends. The thing is that she proudly boasted that she was married and used to show the ring to every guy she sleeps with, and how she used to host multiple men at her house, my house. So basically, she was cheating on me from day one, and me being away for those ten years was a boon for her. Anyways, I have officially told her parents and mine. I hired an advocate, copied those pics to my pen drive, and have officially filed for a divorce. Update First of all thank you all for the massive support you all have shown towards my last post. It really meant a lot for me. So I think I too should do justice on my part as well and keep you guys updated with the progressions that have been happening. But before that I would like to apologize to everyone who have commented on my post as I haven't replied back to them yet. I am new to Reddit and I am trying it a bit hard to reply to every single comment as I clearly didn't expect to get so much response. I sincerely apologize for that and I will try to reply one by one as soon as I can. I have cut all contacts with her. He has tried to contact me several times through calls, texts and social media as well. I picked up her call once only to tell her that I will be contacting her through my advocate, and I expect her to do the same, and I won't be entertaining any communications that happens out of the loop. About a week after she moved out, her best friend came over and literally blasted me off. She accused me of being selfish, self-centered, and an unloving person. According to her it was fine for a person to slip off once in a while, and that I should accept her and the kids. Well, that was the last time I saw her. I cut her off after that. Same way, three more of her girlfriends contacted me endorsing her. I blocked them all. My family is with me in this, and they are giving me all the support they can. Her father visited me one day and apologized me for how things have turned out. He said how much embarrassed he is for his daughter's deeds. In general he is a good man. In fact all the rest of her family is good people. 
They have communicated me after all this and have shown me sympathy and none ever told me to reconcile with her. Seems like they all are embarrassed by her acts. After the initial shock and grief that followed, I am doing well now. Yes, the empty house feels a bit odd, and my heart too feels empty, but I am getting used to it. I joined a nearby gym. I bought a road bike, cycle, and take it for a ride every morning. I used to have three bikes while we were dating, but had to sell them away as she never liked them, and used to tell me how much I was spending for my cycling hobby. Well, no one to complain anymore. I have separated the accounts and pulled in whatever money I could. There is still one joint account in our name, and I think I will proceed with that as the court says. The house is in my name so I am not worried about it. I read a comment that I should be leaking the photos to expose her. No. I won't be doing that. Those photos are evidence that I will be submitting in the court. I don't want to expose her or anything like that. I just want to get rid of this woman from my life, as soon as possible, and I don't care what she does afterwards. I won't be keeping any relationship with the kids. They are not mine. I know they too are Vic asterisk Tims of her deeds, but I can't raise someone else's bloodline, and I know it sounds cold. Yes, they loved me, and I loved them as well, but I lost my love and empathy for them the day paternity results came. They are her problem now, and the father's as well, if they ever show up. I think I have covered almost every point that's been going on now. If I missed any, feel free to ask me, and I will try to answer them. And once again, thank you all for your support. Update Hello everyone once again. So the first hearing of the court happened this Saturday yesterday for me. We didn't expect it to happen in such a short notice as to how things are due to the pandemic, but my advocate and I are glad that it is on now. Since a lot of people like me posting my last update as pointers, I will make this one too as pointers. It was a crazy day to be honest with a lot of drama. Before I will jump into the story right away, I think I will give some extra information in here which will make sense as the story progresses. After discussing with my advocate, I have come to a conclusion that I will be suing her for paternity fraud. But not along with this. My first priority is getting my name removed from the birth certificates. Then finalizing the divorce. Only after I am done with these two, I will be proceeding with this as it's something I can wait for. While I was pulling out all my money out, I pulled out money from a fixed deposit in which I invested some seven years ago for the kids. I liquidated and it was quite some money. So I went on to buy three bikes. An aero bike, an endurance bike and a gravel bike. I also bought some cycling gear as well along with it. The rest of the money I paid to my subordinates as an off-the-record bonus. Because they handled my business well while I was unable to look after the day-to-day -day working. They took care of all the deals and paperwork which made the business run smooth even in my absence. So they deserved it. At the court. So this when the circus really began. I was with my advocate in the corridor discussing last-minute details, and that's when I saw he friend, the same one who blasted on me, walking right towards us and this is what she said hey, so you made it. How dare you block my number? I tried to contact you for a while. We all were. What's wrong with you? Is this what you really want? Look, you still got chance. Just forget and move on. Take her back and be a good father to those kids. And what's up with you wasting your money? I saw you bought new bikes. You are crazy to spend money for those skeletal frames. You know that she doesn't like you spending on bike, no? You should have given that money to her and the kids. If you can't do that by yourself, you can give it to me and I will pass it on to her. She paused. I didn't utter a single word back to her and nor did my advocate, he was carefully listening to her to check if her tone was changing into an aggressive slash threatening one. She continued as she got no response from me and this part really surprised me. Look, she did her thing while you were away and things would have been good between you two if you hadn't known about it. Why can't you think it that way? Tell me who told you about this. You should take her back and I think you should keep an open marriage or something. Just accept her the way she is. Luckily by this time, we were summoned to the chamber so she had to end her monologue. 
Now the thing is I didn't told anyone how and from whom I get to know about her deeds except my advocate and parents because I know the if I reveal his name, these people will go on to Hara asterisk SS him. Inside the chamber the procedure started. After the formal procedures the judge got into the business. My advocate had submitted those photos as an evidence of adultery the day before. And her advocate didn't contest against that so the first impression was that she committed adultery. So, upon my request the court ordered for a paternity test to be conducted for all three kids to decide whether I am the father or not and the next time we have to be present before the court after the results are submitted to the court. Once it's done, my name will be removed from the birth certificate. However, her advocated contest against divorce. Which means it won't be a smooth procedure. The judge asked me if I got to say anything. I said I will be communicating through my advocate, and I don't have anything to say otherwise. He then moved to her, and that's when the floodgates opened. She put up a really good show I must say. All crying and weeping. She wanted me to reconsider divorce and take her and the kids back. She accused me of maligning her reputation and using my friends to conspire against her as most of them blocked or cut contacts with her. I never asked anyone to do so, but I did tell everyone why we split. My friends cut ties with her by their own will. Then she demanded financial support for her and her kids. Despite all this, she didn't say a word about her cheating on me. No acceptance, no apologies, nothing. The judge then asked my advocate whether I was willing to support her financially in any way up until divorce or reconciliation and my advocate strongly objected it. He stood by the fact that she committed adultery so she doesn't have any right to ask for financial aid and nor does she has any authority over my assets. And since paternity tests were to be conducted, I prefer to suspend all financial aids to the kids up until the results arrive. With that the first day was wrapped up. Yes, her friends gave me a dirty look before they left and she not for once made eye contact with me. Then her parents came to talk to me and I told them that some of her stuff is still at my place and I would like them to collect it back. Her father came over this morning to collect back her remaining stuff. I had my advocate come over as well. During the while we had a cup of tea and that's when I came to know about some of the background details. She had moved out of her parents' place a couple of days ago. Just her, not the kids. Kids are still living with her parents. Her reason for moving out was that she needed some space and time, and she moved in with a friend of hers. I did saw this phenomenon in the court. She sat in the front row, flanked by her friends on both her sides while he parents sat two rows behind her. I never saw her or her friends talking to the parents, and after the session she was picked up by her friend. For me, I am doing well now. I am taking care of myself. I am able to focus on my work and I am able to get enough sleep at night. Some people in here suggested me to see a therapist. I do value their opinion, but I think as long as I am doing well and not having any emotional trouble, I don't need a professional help. I had my parents move in with me. My mother helps me in cooking, or I should rather say teaching me, while my father helps me in business and sorting my finance. Apart from my primary business, we own an auto workshop in partnership along with my brother. It was my sister-in-law, brother's wife, who used to bring me food three times and helped me with house chores during the initial days when my wife moved out. My SIL still comes over to do extra chores and also to help my mom in the kitchen. Along with that, I got my brother, sister and friends as regular visitors. Basically I am around good people and they are making sure that I don't feel alone. And it is because of these folks I don't want to liquidate my assets, move to a foreign country, and apply for citizenship in there, as someone suggested me in here. Regarding my friend who made me aware of this, I am planning a big gift for him once all these things settle down. I still don't see marriage to be a bad thing. What I feel like is that it's the divorce laws that make this a losing game for one party, at least in Western countries. And it's not the marriage that's bad. It's just some people who are not fit to get married and then go on to malign the whole marriage system. But with that being said, I am not looking to date someone. Not until this issue settles down for once and all. I don't want my problem to be someone else's as well.
Because I think I might be using that person as an emotional tampon amidst of all this. Finally, I am not yet comfortable with sharing which country I am from, but I can tell you all that I am from Asia. I once again thank you all for the amount of support and heart that you guys have shown me during this difficult period. So I believe it's my obligation to keep you all updated with what's happening in my life. Hopefully, my next update will be after the paternity results come out and after the next court session. Found out my wife has been cheating on me with my best friend. First, a little bit of background. I love this lady. I have spent six long years of my life with her, and our lives are deeply intertwined. I only had one other real girlfriend before coming across my future wife. We dated for three years, got married, and have been married for about 2.5 years. We have our ups and downs, our fights and romantic nights, just as any long-term couple has. Recently things have been a little worse, but life is stressful, we had to move back in with her mother due to financial reasons because it worked for both the mother and us. Recently, she has been hanging out with a mutual friend of ours quite often. She regularly goes and sees him while I am unavailable at work. They do seemingly normal things like watch TV, drink, go to the beach, etc. The frequency of these visits has increased exponentially over the last few months, to at least once a week if not more. My friend had become increasingly distant and unavailable to hang out if I was involved. I was becoming more suspicious with every rendezvous. Last Friday, after an unrelated fight with my drunk wife, I had the overwhelming urge to look at her phone. This isn't normal, and usually, I respect her privacy. My suspicions got the best of me, and I decided to look. I pulled up the text message history with the guy. What I found destroyed me. Detailed, graphic messages, dating back at least two months. My stomach sank, I nearly became physically ill, I felt the blood rush from my face and became faint. There were messages referencing BJ, her saying how he makes her insatiable, and in her words we could duck, in response to what could we do. I was stunned. I couldn't process it. It didn't make sense. My mind was spinning. I felt more emotion in those few minutes than I ever have before. Disgust, betrayal, rage, regret, fear, and life-shattering sadness. How could my precious wife do this to me? Here I am picturing my sweet lady being ducked by this a-hole, who had been my friend since before I had even met my wife. How could he betray our friendship like that? I can't say I didn't contemplate loading the gun at that point. If not for them, for me. I was destroyed, a sobbing wreck of a man, collapsed in bed next to his drunkenly passed out 403 wife. I can't forgive her. I made up my mind right then and there, this is absolutely unforgivable. I have to get out. I have to leave and be on my own. I don't have any money saved up, I don't have my own car. I barely own much of anything at all. I decided not to tell her that I know yet, so I have time to prepare myself for solo living. Thanks to the support of my few friends, I was able to find a place to move in. I have another friend with a car I can buy. I'm getting my ducks in a row to drop a bomb on the 403 and get the duck away. This brings you up to date. As it stands right now, I plan to pack and move all of my things while she's away at work tomorrow. I have to pick her up from work at the end of the day. I'll bring her home, she will see all my stuff gone, and the final argument will begin. I don't know exactly what I am going to say, but with as much as I have to say, it will come easily. So, Reddit, now you know my horrible story. Please offer me your advice, insight, and general helpfulness that you are so well known for. Edit, first and foremost, I love you Reddit. Seriously. The outpouring of support, advice, and the I know how you feel forward slash same happened to me has helped me tremendously. I never expected this type of response, let alone to hit the front page. From the bottom of my now broken heart, thank you all. Sorry if you sent me a message, I haven't had time to respond to many, but I'm trying to read them all. Next, I hear your advice. 99% of you are saying don't give her that final argument. The more I read, the more I agree with you. You guys are right, it would be nothing but extra unnecessary hurt. 
The problem here is I'll be using her car to move my crap all day Friday. I'm thinking the new plan is a small note, more than just I know, but not a whole book, and I'll leave the car and keys for her at her work. Then I'll get picked up by a friend and ride into the sunset. That way she reads the note, is devastated, and then goes home to find the house empty of my things, with me nowhere to be found. Of course, I will lawyer up. I do feel as though my proof is sufficient, I have read divorce laws for my state, Maryland, and I have my bases covered. I do not have assets to split, not much communal property, no kids. For this I am thankful. At least I found out now, before we had all of those things to worry about. To those who think we should get back together, and I should forgive her. No ucking way. One thing I didn't mention in my initial post, this happened once before in the past, before we got married, and I tried the forgiveness thing once. Never again. Thanks again Reddit. I'll post follow-up sometime soon when I can. Update. Friday went as well as something like this can go. I heard Reddit's advice and had changed my plan before the day begun. No final argument. Despite learning the horrible news, our last week went stunningly well. We went to the beach early on in the week. Had phenomenal Zex Wednesday night. On Thursday, we went out for a nice dress-up fancy dinner, on her dollar, then went to the movies, also on her dollar. Friday, she was in a really good mood and I had some great morning Zex. I dropped her off at work, gave her a heartfelt hug and goodbye. That was the last time we spoke. I immediately went over to get the keys to my new place and some boxes to pack with. Raced home to start packing my crap. My brother-in-law is home all the time, so of course he was there. I pulled him aside and broke the news. He was furious at his sister and completely on my side. He was a great brother to me and I made sure to tell him while I had the chance. We cried and talked about it for a while and afterward he was as helpful as possible, aiding me while I packed up. Sadly, nearly all of my belongings fit into one carload of a tiny little hatchback. Unloaded the first trip, and it was just about time for my friend with a truck to get off work. Went back, and the mother-in-law was now home. We spoke at length. She supported me as well. She didn't take my side, because she doesn't take sides, but she understood my decision and was very supportive. She let me know I could call upon her for help at any time, and that I was still family to her. We talked and cried together for some time. She wished for us to work it out, but I told her I could never forgive her daughter, and she completely understood. I left the wife's car at the house and asked the mother-in-law to go pick her up after she is out of work. She was going crazy all day because I was ignoring her. She couldn't reach me, called many times, texted countless messages, and I ignored them all. She started calling my friends and family, she was worried that I had been arrested or got in a car accident or something similar. When they would talk to me, I'd let them know to tell her they couldn't reach me either. I did intend to leave a note at home, but I got caught up in all the emotion of talking to her mother-in-law and completely forgot. Call me weak, but I ultimately did send her a message, I'm not going to talk about it right now, and I'm going to continue to ignore your texts. You have nothing to say to me right now. I hope you're happy together, and I hope it was worth it. I can never forgive you. Of course, after this follows a few messages from her, groveling and apologizing. She admitted it, apologized, said she felt like the biggest piece of scrap in the world, that I'm the love of her life, and the only one she wants. She even had the audacity to include we broke it off almost two weeks ago, like that's supposed to make me feel better. I haven't said anything else to her. Fast forward, back at the new place. Unpacking and settling in. Establishing my own place is doing wonders for my morale. I am in high spirits, feeling optimistic and full of life. I am moving in with the friend I have known the longest, who has been there for me since I first moved to Maryland over 10 years ago. Good conversation and enjoying the trees with close friends, and I'm on my way to healing. I plan to use this second chance at independence to take a step back, analyze my life, and start down the path of improving myself and becoming happy with who I am. It's time to shed a few pounds, focus on honing my musical ability, I play guitar, bass, drums, and dabble in electronic music, 
and most of all, go out and enjoy the world and the people in it. I would like to travel a little, meet new people and see new places. Despite this horrible situation I am going through, I feel renewed and invigorated. I'll hopefully meet a few of you Redditors out there, many of you offered to have me over or buy me a beer, and I think soon I may take some of you up on that offer. I can't keep up with the thousands of comments, but I am doing what I can to at least read the messages and respond to a few as well. Seriously Reddit, I love you all, you answered my call for help, and for that I am eternally grateful.